students we have already discussed the summary of the play strife written by john goldsworthy and today we are going to discuss it as a problem play strife is a problem play that deals with the conflict between capital and labor between the haves and have nots problem plays discuss the problem very realistically and not only the language and style but the whole setting the situations and the characters are realistic in this type of drama we can say that problem plays or a problem play is essentially a drama of ideas because there is no much action on the stage in these types of plays and discussion is very important the characters just sit down and discuss the problem there is nothing heroic in these plays and there are no heroes or any uh, romantic events that happens in these plays there are only common place people and common themes the dramatists discuss the problem from all aspects but they do not offer any solution they usually end the plays on a question mark in many uh, of these plays the characters are uh, just like the mouthpieces of the playwright or the dramatist so today we'll discuss this play uh, strife as a problem play and what problem um, goldsworthy tries to put before us through this uh, play uh, we'll discuss about that so uh, let's begin discussing this play as a problem play in this play action is concerned with a strife as you are now familiar with the summary of the play uh, the strike is in trinartha tin plate works and what happens the employers and the employees they remain adamant on their stand if the employers and the employees had been reasonable there would have been no strike they would have accepted a compromise which had been worked out by tench the secretary of the company and harness a union official but the chairman of the board of directors mr anthony he believes that if the workers go on strike the employers should make no concession to them but should fight against them till they surrender whereas roberts the leader of the workers who is a firebrand and who be- he believes that workers must continue the strike till the end till the employers surrender and concede all their demands so in this way neither anthony nor roberts believes in the policy of compromise or in the policy of uh, say give and take they do not want even to talk of compromise they are both fanatics and they want to fight to the finish the result is obviously the strike that goes on for more than uh, four or five months the company incurs a loss of around 50000 pounds and the workers and their wives and children they shiver in cold without food and fire in spite of this huge loss and suffering on the part of both the parties when the directors meet the representatives of workers neither side is prepared to bend even a little 
Roberts refuses to make the slightest change in the workers' demands. And Anthony tells him bluntly, there is not one single demand on this paper that we will grant. So in this way, they wage a relentless war and the result is suffering and losses. Roberts wants that the strike should go on because they should fight against the exploiters, the capitalists, whose determination is to crush labourers. And in this way, it was obvious that if these extremists continued to be at the helm of affairs in the two camps, the agreement was not possible. And in this way, what will happen? The losses of the company would continue. It will multiply. And the workers' family would also continue to starve and die. So, Goldsworthy, in this way, by presenting the situation before us, gives us his own ideas that extremism in individuals and groups only leads to conflicts resulting in waste and suffering. Waste of manpower, uh, waste, wastage of money, everything. And when Wonkin, one of the directors, finds you remember, uh, he uh, tells Anthony when he was adamant to fight to a finish, he says him, take care, I quote, take care. The essence of things is to know when to stop, unquote. Because when he finds that Anthony is unmoved, he gives the warning, this way danger lies. So when two extremists and fanatics are the leaders of warring groups or say two camps, the result is fatal. It's colossal waste and untold suffering. Mrs. Roberts, who has some of the finest qualities of women, she became an innocent victim of this strife. Dozens of other women and almost all the children of the labourers are on the brink of starvation. Nobody gains anything from this conflict and the weakest members of society suffer the most. A settlement is arrived at the end of the play in the last act when the two extremists, Anthony and Roberts, both are overthrown by their own followers. And then it is found that the terms of the final settlement are exactly the same as had been suggested to them by Tench and Harness four months back. So, all the losses and sufferings have been in vain. It's useless. Through this play, Goldsworthy tries to give a message indirectly that if we want happiness, harmony and progress in society, we must give up obstinacy, false pride and fanaticism and follow the path of moderation, of compromise and conciliation. So in this way, he just through his setting, characters and dialogue, he puts before us a situation, he puts before us a problem and he didn't try to give any solution but he makes the readers to ponder and to think themselves that what's the use of such a strife which is which creates suffering for all and losses for all. So this is all students for today and tomorrow we'll discuss another aspect of the play. Thank you.